background. So Tom Tom's a shorter Tom's a tough time, but I got a word tonight and I was praying about this. I had a completely different word, but God woke me up this morning and really put this word on my heart. And it goes along with the theme for tonight. I'm always amazed that when God creates a theme that we are always weave it through. See this message that I have tonight, this short word, I believe it's for those of you going through a struggle tonight. But I want to talk to you first of all, how many of you watching tonight have sisters? Okay. Yes, you know what I'm about to say. When some when a sister bars your clothes without asking, right? What? It is so annoying. You'll be like, I'll have sisters in our family group text and they'll be like, you better take it back. That's my dress. And you won't have seen them for months. I remember one time I was working out at the Planet Fitness and my little sister was there. And I'll, I'll summarize this story really briefly. She left her Nike shoes in the locker room and somebody took her shoes. Now, I... I'm what they call feisty or a truth speaker. I was so mad. Somebody took my little sister's shoes. You would not believe it. I was in there. Uh, every time I went to Planet Fitness, I was in there looking for the person who took the shoes. Like, was it you? Was it you? Anybody get a defensive over their siblings? Like, you can fight with them, but nobody else can mess with them. So I remember going into Planet Fitness just being so angry with the fact that somebody took her shoes. And, and, and I was like, take them back, you know, going around searching for it. But it made me think about in the kingdom of God, how often I see the enemy take stuff from those that are in the family of the kingdom of God. Or maybe you're watching tonight and you've never accepted Jesus into your heart. Well, call into the prayer line 770-398-28 and you'll be in this family too. And I want to invite you in. But it bothers me when people take stuff for my family. And all of you watching tonight, in some way or another, I feel compelled to tell you that it is time for the enemy to take it back. It is time that we begin to rise up. I feel too often that we allow the enemy to dictate what happens in our life. We give up. We talk tonight all about failure and authenticity and how we allow these failures in our life and these imperfections to take us down. And we allow the enemy to push us back. But I want to look at you tonight and say, it's time to take it back. It's time to look at the enemy and say, I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. See, I believe in getting forceful. I have an obsession with your possession of your destiny. When anybody talks to me and they say, coach, what are you obsessed with? I always say I'm obsessed with seeing people possess their destiny. And the only way we're going to do that, if we begin to stand up and get forceful on the enemy who tries to take our stuff and we need to begin to take it back. You see, as Christians, as believers, we need to rise up. Up and begin to walk in the authority that God has given us. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and over scorpions and over every power of the enemy. I'm reminded of the story in 1 Samuel 30. David, he's this mighty warrior. And in 1 Samuel 30, 1 through 8, all of their camp had been taken from them. Their, their wives, all of their homes, everything had been taken from them. And David was weeping. He was upset with his men that they had gone out to battle. Have you ever gone out to do a good thing for the Lord and it seems like everything around you got taken? David and his men had gone out to do a good thing for the Lord and everything when they came back was taken. And yes, they had a moment to weep and they were discouraged. But in 1 Samuel 30 and 8, it reads this. So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I repent? pursue this troop shall I overtake them and God answered him pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all and without fail recover all I'm so there are many of you watching tonight and that the enemy has come in and he has destroyed your home you may think that you are bound by that addiction and you're walking in that shame he's taken he's taking you down a path of shame and guilt and not allowed you to walk freely there are some of you watching tonight and you've allowed the enemy to get a foothold into your marriage and try to take your marriage from you try to take your child from you pastor you're watching tonight the enemy's tried to to take your church from you tonight or this in this time of your life but I'm here to look at you tonight and tell you don't settle for attack take it back 
Don't settle for attack, take it back. I'm gonna have to push my hair back, it's getting hot. Don't settle for attack, take it back. God has given you authority. It says in him, we are more than conquerors. He looked at David and David said, God, look, this mess has happened in my life. What do you want me to do? And God said, go out there and basically, I'm breaking it down into modern day. Basically, God looked at him and said, go ahead and take it back. You're gonna get it all back plus interest. You're going to get it all back. You see, in Ephesians 3.20, it says he can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. And I think that that same thing is true for when we are struggling in our lives, when we are in messed up situations, when the enemy has attacked us, or maybe we've messed up. Maybe we've messed up and we find ourselves in failure situations. Guess what? We can rise up and go out. And I'm here to tell you that God is looking at you tonight and say, take it back for surely you will recover all. And guess what? God gives it back with interest. Whenever the prodigal son went away, guess what? When he came back, the prodigal son messed up on his own doing. He made his own mess. Have you ever made your own mess? Woo, I've made my own mess probably three times a week at least, if you've ever made your own mess. But guess what? God threw a party. You see, whenever somebody messed up, whether it was what the enemy had taken or whether it's something that they had done, God still did exceedingly and abundantly if they didn't quit. The Bible says the righteous fall down seven times, but they get back up. Some of you tonight, you feel like this is the end of the road for you. But I'm here to tell you tonight, don't settle for attack. Take it back. You take a deep breath. You get up. And God is going to show up in your situation, for you shall surely recover all. There are three areas that I believe that we need to focus on taking back that are going to make a huge difference. First of all, we need to take back our mind. Romans 12 and 2 says we shall, we need to renew our mind. We have to strengthen ourselves by renewing our mind. You've got to take back your mind. You see, the enemy has been getting into our mind. He loves to tell us lies. He loves to tell us we aren't good enough. He loves to tell us that we are the only ones who've ever failed in this manner. He loves to tell us that we will stay stuck in this pit. But I'm here to tell you tonight, don't quit in that pit. You don't settle for attack. Take it back. Take back your mind. Because the Bible says where your mind goes, there, will, will, there we will go. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We've got to take back our mind. And I'm talking about sometimes I coach people all the time, go ahead and look crazy in your car. Go ahead in your house tonight and say, you will not have my mind. The Bible says, take every thought captive unto the obedience of Christ. And if it's a thought that comes up, you have to cast it down. So first of all, don't settle for a tag. Take it back. Take it back. Don't you suffer from anxiety. Don't you suffer from depression. Take back your joy. Nehemiah says the joy of the Lord is our strength. I think a lot of times we walk around so weak as Christians because we've allowed the enemy to take control of our mind. And so we're full of anxiety and doubt, but God has come to give you joy and peace. Don't settle for attack in your mind. Take it back. The second thing is our mind and our minute. Quit letting the enemy take your time. Quit letting him take the time in your marriage. Quit letting him take the time of you not fulfilling your destiny. I feel that so strongly. Some of you tonight are watching and you feel that it is too late to pursue your destiny. You're too messed up. You don't come from the right family. You, you didn't do it right. Maybe, maybe you messed up on drugs. Maybe you went to prison. Maybe you are divorced. Maybe you're a single mom. Who cares? When God called you, he didn't say, I need you to be this person. He just called you and created you. Don't settle for that attack of the enemy taking away any more of your time. The days are short. The time is now. You've got to get out there. You've got to go after your destiny. You've got to take back your time. So don't settle for attack. Take it back. Take back your mind. Don't let the enemy take your mind. Take back your minute. Don't let the enemy take your time. And finally, take back your movement. See, the enemy wants you to sit down and shut up, but God wants you to get up and go out. The enemy wants you to sit down and shut up, but God wants you to get up and go out. 
See, God didn't call you to be pretty on a pew. He called you to be powerful and effective walking in your purpose. I remember the other day, have you ever gone into the Starbucks bathroom? Okay. Yes, I drink Starbucks. I know, maybe that's bad. I'm not sure. I'm trying to cut back. My husband told me I spend too much. So I was in the Starbucks. Y'all, I'm on my hips. The enemy, the Lord must be anoint me with an attitude tonight. I don't know. The enemy is ticking me off. So I was in the Starbucks bathroom and I walked in and all of a sudden I sat down and the light went off. Have you ever been there? It's very frightening situation to be in the bathroom and the light goes off. I can't believe I'm sharing this on national television. Whatever. Obviously, y'all need to hear it. So I'm in there and it's dark. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, of course, the end of the world and the rapture is going to come when I'm using the bathroom. Like, what is going on here? And so I begin to like sit there and it's dark. And all of a sudden, I wave my hand. No, I was not praising the Lord, but it dawned on me that maybe this was a motion sensitive bathroom. So I waved my hand and all of a sudden the light came on and I realized that, oh my gosh, this is a motion sensitive light. Whoever put that in the bathroom at Starbucks was out of their mind. So here I was using the bathroom, waving my hand so I could see what I was doing. I know it's, it's a bad picture. My point, I'm like waving and using the restroom, but my point is, is that the light didn't come on till I began to move. And guess what? The same way that the Starbucks bathroom was, is the same way that our God is. When we move, he moves just like that. Okay, I'm showing my age, y'all know. I'm from Atlanta. So when he, when we move, he moves. We need to begin to move towards the promises we're believing for, and God is going to step back. See, we need to quit settling for a tag that the enemies cut the lights off in our room, and we need to start to take it back, because just like God told David, surely you will recover it all. God is looking at you tonight. He's looking at many of you tonight. Take it back, for you will surely recover all. Mom, you're sitting there at home, and you're saying, I wish my baby would come to the Lord. Maybe he in a crack house. Maybe he's on drugs. Maybe he's in prison. Don't you quit praying. Don't you leave that weapon of warfare. You keep praying because he, God said, you will surely recover all. Take back. Maybe some of you tonight, you're in your marriage and you can't stand your spouse and you're ready to get divorced. There's, there is a couple watching tonight and you are going, you're ready to get divorced. You're, you're going to sign the papers tomorrow, but God would say to you, don't settle for attack. Take it back. God is about to renew a sense of reconciliation within you because God has joined you together and what God has brought together, let no man separate. There are some of you tonight, you've been sick. You've been dealing with chronic sickness. And God would say, don't you settle for a tag. Take it back. I did not send my son Jesus so that you could walk in sickness, but I sent my son Jesus so that you could walk in help. Don't settle for a tag. Take it back for you shall surely recover all. There are some of you tonight watching. You're dealing with extreme anxiety. You're dealing with extreme depression. You've even contemplated suicide. I'm here to tell you tonight, don't you settle for a tag. You take it back. You begin to renew your mind. You go look in the scriptures and you look and see that God has a plan for you. Jeremiah 29 11 says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you. God knew you. He approved of you. There are some of you tonight who are watching and you don't have a father and you're struggling in your identity. Don't you settle for a tag that you're not worth it. You take back your identity and you find out who you are in Christ for the Bible says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So don't settle for a tag.